The Prime Minister first released words at Gama, words not tested or checked with the Attorney General's Department or the Solicitor General. He later amended those words in a letter to Peter Dutton, and then he amended it again a third time 11 days ago. Along the way, there have been media stumbles by the Prime Minister and Ministers because no one has settled the details about how the voice will work. The Prime Minister has chosen this process, or lack thereof. He's chosen not to legislate the body so consensus could be built in the Parliament and Australians could see how his national voice would work. He's chosen not to provide Australians with details. He's chosen not to answer Peter's, Peter Dutton's questions, which are being asked daily by people around the country. People who share the conviction about the need to see change in the circumstances of Aboriginal people in this country, but who want to know meaningfully what the voice will do and whether it will be meaningful. And he takes offence when questions are asked about details in the parliament, in media interviews and at press conferences. He has refused to release the Solicitor General's advice, although he was happy to do so last year when it suited his political purposes. And while he's held up the Calma Langton report in the parliament, it's clear he's never been across its details. He has ignored repeated calls for a formal government response to Calma Langton. In doing so, he's shown disrespect to the 9,400 Australians who engaged with that report. He's ignored calls for a process to settle the Constitutional Amendment before presenting it to Parliament. In doing so, he's ignored the 18 different versions of Constitutional Amendment presented at the 2018 Joint Select Committee and the discussion of alternatives put forward by such people as Father Frank Brennan and Louise Clegg. And he's ignored the possibility of earlier proposals to reword the racist power and remove the spent race-based provisions in Section 25 of the Constitution. He's failed to establish a process to properly consider the full range of constitutional options and thereby build consensus around a model to be presented to the Australian people. Even now, with his wording going to a parliamentary committee, he has said, and I quote, I would take a lot of convincing before I would support any amendment to those words. This doesn't sound like the views of a person looking to reach consensus. He says no party has a veto. He says he's prepared to go it alone and occasionally calls for bipartisanship about a process and a timetable which we have had no input into. The Prime Minister abandoned the process of Calma Langton, a process that was local and regional first and national voice second. The Prime Minister has discarded the deep bipartisan engagement that has characterised at least the last decade. Neither Peter Dutton nor I have had any substantive engagement with the government on how we can achieve consensus. Now, I concede there have been calls and chats before announcements letting us know what's happened. But that's politeness. It's not engagement or partnership. Not answering Australians' questions, not releasing legal advice, not engaging with constitutional issues are not the actions of a government acting in good faith. It's tragic where we find ourselves with an idea that should be bringing us together but isn't, all because of a Prime Minister who knows best and who has abandoned process and the spirit of partnership.